Pat with Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love. And we're reading from Romans chapter 8. Listen, you guys, all hell is breaking loose. We don't like it. We don't like this dark season. But God wants to comfort his people. Be encouraged. Romans chapter 8, starting at verse 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. In other words, Daddy. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. I'm going to stop there right now. No matter what's going on, it's all going to work out for our good. Now, when we look at what's happening around us with the government, with the vaccines, with this pandemic, with all the things that are going on around us, wearing the mask, all the things we hate, the isolation, it's crazy, the suicide ride rising. Listen, you guys, listen to this. At the most hopeless moment in my, this is my take on humanity, in the history of humanity, the most hopeless feeling moment was the moment that Christ gave up the ghost on the cross. That had to be the darkest. All hope seemed lost. All was gone. All was washed up. There was nothing left to look forward to. It's all over now. Nothing but dirge and mourning and sadness, darkness, gloom, oh, fear, on top of fear. Now what do we do? Our one and only hope is dead and gone. What do we do? But three days later, y'all, three days of agonizing mourning, agonizing Heaviness, three days being intimidated by the law while waiting. What happens? Our Lord and Savior rose from the dead. He had the victory over death, hell, and the grave, which gives us the same victory, which gives us the authority over all of this crap going on right now. Let me tell you, at the darkest moments, y'all, God is working his biggest miracles. So I know that when we start feeling discouraged, when we start feeling down, trodden, and we start feeling hopeless, and it feels like darkness and gloom and bondage and oppression and death all around us, sickness all around us. We have to be careful and cautious and safe and oh my goodness. It feels so oppressive, doesn't it? It feels so heavy. But God, but God, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly, above, above, above all, all we could ask or think according to the power that works in us. What power is working in you right now? Have you taken authority and called COVID back down to hell where it came from? 
never to return? Have you called down all the evil that's been breaking loose? Have you been binding spirits of suicide, sickness, COVID, all of the sicknesses? Have you been binding those demons that have been attacking people in the midnight hour of darkness, discouragement, and hopelessness? Have you been praying divine protection, God's angels right here on the earth? Have you been praying the blood of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Spirit to burn up the lies and expose the perpetrators? What have you been praying? Have you been praying? What are you doing with your moments of discouragement? Giving in? Wallowing? Or are you fighting the good fight? We cannot lay down and play dead. We are children of the Most High King. God gave Jesus the authority over heaven, earth, and hell. We have the same authority in the name of Jesus. And we need to rise up and use it. Amen? So I don't want to see any lips poked out. I don't want to see anybody wallowing in their self-pity. I don't want to see anybody throwing their hands up and just saying, forget it. I'm out of here. Stop the world. I'm ready to jump off. No. You're here for a reason. If one can put a thousand demons to flight and two can put 10,000 demons to flight. How many born again Christians are on the face of this earth? How many are here in your house, in my house? How many are around in our church of love? How many are around the church of God all around the earth? Huh? We could put the demons to flight, y'all. I don't care how many swarms come out back to back. We have authority, y'all. And when you start thinking those thoughts and feeling those feelings, fight it. Resist the devil. He will flee. There's a song. Two songs came to my mind at one time. So I'm going to do the first one first. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense to y'all. Are we walking into the enemy's camp, laying our weapons down, shedding our armor as we go, leaving it on the ground? We've got to be strong in the power of his might. Prove to the enemy we are the army of the Lord. And we won the victory. We ain't going to win it. We won it, y'all. The other song that came to my mind was, Teach me to point my face to the storm and stand my ground. When troubles rise up all around, I'll have no fear. Fear has driven many gallant warriors to their knees. Broken hearts and wounded souls have caused them to retreat. Not me, Lord, please, not me. I take the sword of the Spirit in my hand, holding firmly to its truth, knowing all the power within as I march on to the fight. I see the children as they're killed, as Satan slays them with his lies, and compassion rages deep within my soul, and I know once more I must be a warrior for the Lord. Do you want to be a warrior during this dark season? Or have you settled for being a wimp? God has given you all you need, y'all. God has given you all the inner resources, all the power, all the strength. He strengthens us on the inner man. The joy of the Lord is our strength. In the presence of God is joy. You hear me? You have no need to fear. Fear is not of God. God is love and perfect. Perfect love casts out fear. There is no fear in God. There is no fear in love. God is love. 
However you draw it out, it says the same thing. Be encouraged and know that God is totally in control. Totally in control now. What if, what if another country comes and takes over our country? Do you know God can strategically place the army doesn't know about it, the, the, the new military and the new regime doesn't know it, but they could be placing people in position. And some of those people they don't know may be born again Christians. And God can place those, those military right in the regions where the biggest concentrations of God's people are. And there is supernatural favor, y'all. And for those who aren't, supernatural mercy i'm telling you no matter what is working against you god can make your enemies be at peace with you we have no need to fear no need no matter if it takes us all the way to death's door what does the bible say about death for god's people it mocks death. It makes fun of death. Death, hey death, where is your sting? Uh-huh, yeah. Hey death, death, where is your victory? Uh-huh, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's basically what it's saying. There is no sting. There is no victory in death. Not for God's people. We're just walking from one room of reality into the next room. A higher room heavenly places, heaven itself, presence of God, a whole new dimension, y'all, a whole new world. That's right. So I want you to be encouraged that we are not sitting here being victimized by the circumstances. What did Jesus say when he hung on the cross? He said, you're not taking my life from me. Don't you know I could call 10,000 angels? Woo! It'd be all over, y'all. But guess what? I lay it down. Well, see, that's the way it is with us. When we yield up the spirit, nobody's taking it from us. Not even the devil, y'all. God sends escorts to come and escort you out of your old home to take you to your new home. So again, there is no need for fear. Don't fear death. Don't fear the anguish, the sting, the victory of death. There is no sting. There is no victory. That's why when you look at a born again Christian, a true born again Christian, when they die, they look like they're getting ready to pull up the biggest snore. <sighs> they don't look like they're dead. They look sleep, peaceful, because they know who their Redeemer is. Let's go to verse 33. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God who also maketh intercession for us. Who, 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 verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril, that means danger, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities or demons and powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the
the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We are covered, y'all. We are covered. We are, as the word, you can say we're impervious to all that can come at us. No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. We're conquerors over demons. We're conquerors over sickness. We're conquerors over death. We're conquerors over the threat of a new regime. We're conquerors over COVID. We're conquerors over loneliness. We're conquerors over isolation. We are conquerors. We're conquerors over the vaccine, over mandatory vaccine. We are conquerors over the mark of the beast. We are conquerors over the beast in the name of Jesus. Don't y'all forget it. Amen. Death, where is thy sting? Oh, yeah, right. Grave, where is that victory? Oh, shoot, you ain't about nothing. That's right, not compared to Jesus Christ. And if you're in Christ Jesus, none of that stuff can mess with you. Amen? Can't, no, nothing can take you down. Got to remember that. Nothing can take you down. God's got your hand every step of the way. And I'm going to finish with this last statement that Jesus promises us. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. God bless you. Be encouraged in this weird, weird, dark time. God's light will lighten our darkness, y'all. God bless you.